What's up guys, Spin Firearms here, and today we're going to be talking about all the crazy things that happen in the P365 versus Hellcat 500 rounds each, because I learned a lot. When you shoot 500 rounds through the Hellcat in one sitting, 500 through the P365, like 40 rounds of 357 SIG, like 40 rounds of 10mm, and like 40 rounds of 45 ACP all in one video, you learn a lot, you feel a lot, you see a lot, and you notice all the little things, especially in these two handguns, considered I put a thousand rounds through the two of them, in less than 35 minutes and that video is up on the channel if you want to watch it i am very pleased with these two handguns and honestly you got to give it up to both of them right but before we get started hit the like button drop a comment down below and subscribe let's get into it so it was interesting i put a poll out talking about you know which handgun will last 500 rounds one sitting both factory cleaned both factory mags all factory oem parts right and a lot of people said, oh, it's pointless, right? Because they're both going to jam. They're both going to have issues. They're both crappy handguns. They're both not meant to be shot a lot. And I said, that's absolutely ridiculous. You're telling me that a handgun shouldn't be able to run 500 rounds while dirty, um, or while getting dirtied up through that 500 rounds. It shouldn't be able to run that, especially nowadays. It 100% should, especially if it's over that $500 price point, right? When you start talking about the Hellcat P365, they're about $500 give or take fifty dollars right depending where you get it what package that whole sort of thing but these should run 500 rounds of target ammo no problem so anyways i started the video off and i'm like shoot i always talk so good about the hellcat i tell people i have my, it, it has my complete trust it's a great handgun and i put my life on it i even disregard some of the negative things about it because of its reliability and that's just facts and that's just being honest you know and those are some of the things that I noticed in this video and we're or in that video and we're going to talk about it but the Hellcat gained my trust even more 500 solid rounds I really got to learn this handgun even better than I knew it before and it just in, inspires complete faith in me especially with the groupings I was hitting while shooting fast the whole time or relatively fast I was shooting one-handed off-handed all sorts of thing and notice there's no red dot on it I did that simply with these sights right here which I realized I really like this sight picture. Versus the P365, the P365 has amazing sights, don't get me wrong, but to be honest, the Hellcat takes it when it comes to the sight picture. As far as shooting them, grouping wise, someone said, why didn't you show us the tar target? What a terrible presentation. You guys, I put over a thousand rounds of nine millimeter through one target, there was nothing left. Once this was a wide open hole, I moved here, then I moved here, then I moved here. We had our pins were falling off because I had to shoot high at some point and hit and group up there. Um, chunks of the cardboard were falling off. It literally, there's nothing left of the target. Um, I should have took a video of the target because that's, there was nothing left. It was just like a rim of cardboard. And that's because I decided to shoot all over it. We also shot 10 millimeter, which we're going to get into. This is the craziest part of the video. And we didn't even make that video to shoot this. Um, but anyways, we shot 10 millimeter, 357 SIG, and 45 ACP. So people got to see handguns this big versus this big. But this being so powerful and this being relatively snappy, you know, with what people say. But you got to see the differences in the size and the recoil control and all sorts of things. You got to see which handgun I shoot faster, which handgun I handle the recoil better. And I really noticed a bunch of different things throughout the video, right? I noticed that the Hellcat has a lot more felt recoil. I shouldn't say a lot, but it definitely has more felt recoil. I'm not talking about how the handgun handles. I'm talking about right here in your hand. You feel the handgun more than the P365, and that's just a fact. And that's one of those things that I tend to overlook because of its reliability and because of how accurate this handgun is. Regardless of the snappiness, it's been proven over and over again on bench tests and all sorts of things. The Hellcat has one of the best barrels out there, especially for being a 3-inch barrel with how accurate this thing is. And so that is where I'm willing to overlook some of that felt recoil. I also noticed that I couldn't shoot this as fast as the SIG. I wasn't going all out, but I could just tell. Um, just from getting the pattern of the trigger and use to the trigger, 100% I could shoot the P365 faster faster with one hand it just is what it is this is also a softer shooting handgun between the two and what do i mean by that what you feel right here is 100 percent less than the hellcat right in terms of ergonomic i give it to the hellcat the ergonomics for the hellcat just fit my hand p365 definitely isn't bad with this grip um it's not bad at all but i do like the hellcat a tad bit better i'm not saying this is bad i'm just saying a tad bit better I noticed that the finish on the Hellcat is just about as flawless as a finish can get. 
um, and SIG does have some work when it comes to the finish department. As far as where the slide stops located, 100% the SIG has it in a better spot. For people who shoot small handguns a lot, like I do, I rarely hit the slide stop. But in this video, because of how many rounds I was shooting, and we already shot a lot of rounds out of my Snappy DB9 Gen 4 and all this other stuff prior to shooting that video, I did catch my hands getting tired and sort of curling, right? It was started getting this curling motion where my thumb would make its way over. So the P365 having the slide stop here was really nice, but I did notice as my hands got more tired, my grip became a little bit more loot or less tight my palm would engage that and sort of hold it down. And the Hellcat, I did bump it and hold it down so we did have a failure to lock back, but both of them were user induced. Both of them ran all 500 rounds flawlessly. I mean, when I say flawlessly, I mean flawlessly. Not even when I'm racking the slide, we have you know a failure to go into battery. We didn't have any issues at all. These things just ran. It was 25 degrees. We are using all the exact same ammo, SMB ammo. Um, and it just ran. They were just awesome handguns. And honestly, the P365 definitely won over, you know, some respect for me, 100%. Because this handgun originally couldn't shoot 450 rounds before having a major malfunction. Now this thing has ran flawlessly, at, and we're almost to a thousand rounds since my gunsmith fixed it. So absolutely awesome. That is what I want to see. I want to see reliable handguns. If the P365 was a well-known reliable handgun, this thing would be you know, the best of the best. Sometimes it's just SIG's problems that plague their handguns, like the P320 Compact. It's a great handgun, but it's the problems that overshadow it and plague them, which it is what it is. But this thing ran flawlessly, and I got to give credit where credit's due. The trigger was better. Like I said, less felt recoil. Now, ejection pattern. A lot of people, ejection pattern doesn't necessarily matter to them as long as it's running, and I 100% agree, right? They both ran 500 rounds without an issue ejecting anything but at the same time, or extracting anything, right? But at the same time, I did get hit with brass in the forehead twice with the P365. I also had direct brass coming at me over my shoulder, over my left shoulder even, which was weird because you're supposed to be ejecting this way, and it was somehow curling. And if you also watch the video, it looked like a couple times when that casing got ripped out, it like almost went forward off the front of the slider. It hit maybe the barrel, I don't even know. But if you watch the video, you see like a couple that just die real quick, right? So it hits and it flops, like it goes boom, boom. Whereas other ones were going to the right, you know, the right in the right direction. But then we had all the weird ones coming at me off my forehead, off my shoulder, landing on my hat, which once again, doesn't matter. Self-defense encounter, hit me with brass all you want, as long as I can get shots off. But as far as function, it definitely should not be doing that. The Hellcat had a pretty strong ejection pattern. I did notice, you know, Throughout the video, there were some that were probably about 75% to the actual ejection power, but none hit me in the face. None went forward. That's another thing. If you guys watched the full 35-minute video, the SIG had some shells going forward, which once again isn't a big deal because it ran, but some people would say it gets in your way or blah, blah, blah. Honestly, it ran fine. No issues. Um, all the shells made it. The ones that died were a little nerve-wracking, but those were only a couple, and they made it out of the handgun, and that's what matters. The other thing I did notice, and I'm not trying to bag on SIG, because this, like I said, this handgun really earned my respect, and we're going to keep testing this thing, because uh, it's a great shooter, but the slide drag, you can see me talk about it in the video, we had these completely lubed up, and at about 300 rounds, this thing just started dragging, right, like, it gets tight, um, which wasn't an issue, once again, the thing 100% ran, some people say striker drag, whatever the case may be, could be, but it ran, it is what it is, the Hellcat. The trigger is 100% not as good as the P365. But for me, I do like it as a defensive trigger. Um, and I like that it has a dingus, which I'm actually going to be doing a video on the Tyrant CNC released a um, trigger with a trigger dingus on it for the P365. And I'm very excited to install it and make that video for you guys. So stay tuned for that. But the trigger on the Hellcat was definitely not as good as the P365. And what I noticed is for a lot of people, that's where they have the problem. Having the heavier trigger and anticipating that recoil, by the time they pull that trigger, it takes a little bit longer than the P365 to actually pull it. Therefore, they start their dip, and that's where the issues start to happen. Um, and while shooting these, like I said, I shot them about the exact same. So you can say the P365 is the winner then, because I shot it more fast, but the accuracy is literally the exact same. Or you could say, you know, um, yeah, honestly, that's what you can say. Or you can say the safer trigger, the heavier trigger for everyday carry during, you know, a gunfight or you have adrenaline going through you, whatever the case may be, a heavier trigger 
um, could be your best friend. You know, look at it how you want. Like I said, respect about these handguns. The one handgun that let me down, though, it's so funny. If you watch the video, um, you know, my mom was loading the mag. So shout out to her. My wife was filming, so I needed to buy some time so she could keep loading. Well, I went to my bag, and of course, what's in there, my Glock 29. I had a bunch of mags ready for it, loaded. So what I do? I brought it out. What did I do? Talk it up, right? That's exactly how things go on camera. And here's the thing. I don't edit. Yes, the video is 35 minutes long, but you got to see every single part of it. Everything is real. Every, there's no edits. If I like the Hellcat better and the Hellcat Jam three times, I couldn't edit it out. It just is what it is. I couldn't make it look other than it is. But of course I pull this out and I'm, you know, I dumped the first mag. I'm like, all right, that feels pretty good. And then I said, this is my bear defense mag. And I threw the Glock 20 mag in there. I'm like, let's just dump this thing as if a bear was coming at us. And like on the fourth or fifth round, you know, I, I feel that, it, that malfunction. I look straight down and I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. The one time we had the Hellcat versus the P365 in a shooting competition, of course the Glock jams. <laughs> it was the most wild thing to happen in a video. And what it was is a failure to feed. Go check it out though, because go look at the round. The round is like this. I've never seen that that bad in a handgun before. Um, and it was those weird Federal with the red tips on them. So I don't know if that plays a role in it. But I've never had that issue before and we're up close to 1400 rounds with this, this thing. So that was a bummer because I was talking about how it's my bear defense and when I'm in the woods I feel safe with this. And then of course that's when you get the jam. But as far as everything else goes, you know, round of applause to these two. Um, show the video some love. It's a great video. I think it is. Um, I did my best to entertain throughout the 35 minutes because I know it's a lot. But if you're carrying these handguns, respect. Because these things are, you know, in my book, now I have three SIGs that I completely um, have tested and ran over that 500 round mark and we have no issues with. This was originally one of the bad ones. So, you know, is it fixed for good? I think so because I really trust my gunsmith. But we're going to keep putting these SIGs through their paces as well as the Hellcats. We're not letting the Hellcat off the um, hook. So what we're going to do is we're going to continue the series called The Journey of the Hellcat. And we're going to dump ridiculous amounts of rounds through this handgun. I'm just going to maintain it like I normally would. No parts changes. And we're going to see when we get our first part breakage or first major malfunction or something like that. We're going to start that series up. I've always wanted to do it. I started it with my other Hellcat, but I thought let's just start fresh with this one. Considering it's up past 500 rounds right now. Go check out the video where these two go head to head. Thanks for watching, guys.